have a bomb in this jacket. You've got to believe me. Get out. Get out while you've got it. Scott, we've had our Leave now. Okay? We've had that now. Come on. Get out. Everyone, get out. Leave now. My name is Rory Noak. I'm the writer, director, producer of 10 Metres. The concept for 10 Metres, the actual storyline, it came from a few different places. I had a, there was a few things that were on, on my mind. There were, there were people being charged in, you know, who'd gone on holidays, they were getting bombs strapped to them and drugs strapped to them. And it was really, it was a scary time. You know, the idea that you could, a person could have something strapped onto them and be forced into a place that they didn't want to be, knowing that they were in danger and that they had to do it. That was, in the back of my mind, and the idea of that sort of scared me. You've got to believe me. Get out. Get out while you can. Scott, we've had out. Leave now. And I just combined that that fear of something like that could really happen to a to a person with a, an action movie. I just wanted to make an action movie, and I didn't. I wanted to be able to do something that like the big guys in Hollywood would do. I mean, they can do car chases. They can have explosions. They can have you know guns. And how do I get all the good stuff from an action movie and make it into a, an indie film? How can I do it on the cheap? <laughs> yes. Instead of in cars and it's on foot. You go, come, buddy. Action. I wanted it to be a kick-ass action Hollywood movie, but without any of the Hollywood expense. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I got the script, and I went for starters. I went, oh, this, this is. This is actually 90 pages. It's, <laughs> it's not four pages like most of the student things you usually get. And then as soon as I finished it, I called my, my mate Stefan, uh, who plays Carl, and said, man, I've just been given this script. I really reckon we should audition for this. The thing that really attracted it to me was the number one, the fact that it was an action film. What? I also loved the fact that we were doing it in two weeks. So it was easy to get time off work and it was just smashing it out in two weeks. Um, also love the fact that it was all guerrilla shot. It's like, uh, no, we don't have permits for anything. We don't have, <laughs> we don't have your permission to be here. Um, <laughs> he destroyed that. Ah, uh, let's do it again. I was really drawing from, I guess I looked at anything that was, that had that, that energy. That was a big, big for me was to, to for the, uh, for the story to work, it had to feel like it was on the go, it was on the move. So I was looking at a lot of things like Run, Lola, Run and Speed and any of the films Tony Scott directed, you know, because they've, they've got a, a huge amount of energy that's so pushed, pushed into the characters, into the situations, it's written into the story. There was this one scene where we had an opportunity, there was a cop car across the intersection, Burke Street Mall and Swanston Street, so major intersection. And Rory's like, okay, this is an opportunity for you to run to that car, the police car. Don't veer off, like just keep going, 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 and then just at the last minute. So I'm just oh, <laughs> diagonally heading across this, this intersection. There's people everywhere. One thing I remember is being at Melbourne University filming a scene and I was waiting to get the action to run through a crowd or something and some guy walks up to me and goes, right, I need to know what you're doing, who you're filming, who you are, and who's given you permission. And I've just gone, oh, um, well, actually, we're just doing a student film. And he's gone, oh, oh, okay, sorry, in that case, proceed. I'd read it in the script that they run through a shopping centre and I thought, for starters I went, oh well obviously security will be alerted, they'll, they'll rope the area off, there'll be permits and things like that. Um, and then we got there on that first day to, to do, the, to do the, the, sh the scene and Rory said, right, so uh, we'll get one of the cameras up the back, you'll be behind like ladies wear, the other camera will be here and I'll follow you with this one and we'll just run through once. And so, so for starters, we had no idea we were actually doing it. And, uh, and then before you know it, he's gone, action. So we're running through this shopping centre. Got this adrenaline rush, everything, get through the other side. We finish it and he goes, great guys, great. So we'll just walk around and go again. And Stefan and I both looked at each other and gave each other this glance of what the hell have we got ourselves into? Action!
you know when you wouldn't think of this when you're watching the movie because you know your characters are running and they're running at camera but to get the shot like that the camera operators are running backwards like as much as hard as the the actors had it the cameramen are running backwards at the same time to get that shot The, the biggest danger we always thought was that probably not an actor tripping over, probably a cameraman's either going to collide with a pedestrian because, you know, we didn't have permits and we, were, do we, we really pushed our luck. You know, we went into the city. It was pretty challenging. Um, you know, the thing that probably benefited us greatly was having three cameras roll every take. So it was about getting things done quickly and getting the hell out of there. We purposefully found the most busiest parts of Melbourne that we could shoot in because we wanted that commotion and people everywhere. So it would look cool for the film, but you know, possibly kill somebody. <laughs> so we, uh, we just had to be constantly checking over our shoulders and hope for the best and pray that nobody died. So. All good. Nobody did die, so even better. Stop that guy! Oh, fuck! Everything was a challenge. Absolutely everything from the fact that it was done in two weeks, that we were running all the time. Like we run, we would have covered a small African country in distance, I reckon the amount we were running. Um, even just having money to buy a drink when we had a break was a challenge, you know, um, but just everything. It's my urine soaked corner over there. <laughs> it's my sort of chill out area, sort of, you know, just concentrate and centering my body and my breath. We, you know, we'd, we're trying to do it in the CBD. And it was such a challenge because people just kept walking right up and just going, oh, are you doing a movie? And like staring at the camera, it's like, please just, we've been doing this for like, 10 hours a day for two weeks, just go away. The other difficult scene to shoot was the, the policeman who tries to intercept. There's he, at one point in the movie, he, he, he thinks he's gonna, try, he's gonna try and figure out what's going on and stop it. Police, stop right now! When we were shooting it, the, the biggest concern was that we'd, um, because we had a policeman that ends up getting shot, you know, passes by, we're in a public area, they're not going to understand what's going on, you know, they don't see that, you know, sometimes they don't even notice that this, this cameraman there and there, all they see is yelling, a policeman, blood, he's dead on the ground, you know, and they could have called us in and we could have been nailed for that, we knew we were pushing our luck, but we, we were careful, I think that's the only day where we all wore the vests, we all had fluoro vests with, it's just a student film, a film crew sort of stuff written all over our backs, you know, we we towed that whole student film line because nobody takes student filmmakers seriously, so they, you kind of get away with murder if you say you're making a student film. Rory is highly energised, he's infectious, you, you can't help but catch onto his enthusiasm it's um yeah it's really it's exciting to be around him and when he's you know in the moment and working on on his um on his craft in his directing style like he'll give you like the overview of how this scene takes place and the likes but he then allows for collaboration to occur and for spontaneousness to take place on set so i don't know yeah it gave it gave the actors that sense of freedom to explore a little further into the the script as well Given that I first thought that it was just going to be this tiny kind of nothing film, I remember seeing the finished product and and from the script to what we'd shot and done together to seeing the finished product was, was far more than I think any of us had ever imagined. It was just, you know, what, 10 or 15 of us just running through the streets being idiots basically shooting this film. It was a dream of ours to make a feature film and you know, we went out and did it. We didn't, you know, we, we, had, we didn't have a budget, you know, but we had passionate people around us to, you know, they all followed the same vision that Rory had. What Rory did with that finished product was just amazing. Read the fine print of scripts 
Don't just skim them when it says you need to roll down, you know, Carl rolls downstairs and lands on broken glass and you're doing a film where there isn't the budget for a stuntman, there isn't even the budget for a sandwich. It's the glory of film right here. <laughs> um, know that you will have to do that. Yeah, I was no. lying on that floor. And so maybe, I don't know, do some push-ups beforehand, just stretch out the neck, you know, limber up because it's, you know, everyone's like, oh wow, look at us, we're doing guerrilla style stuff. Well, are you really? Because we really did, and I'm telling you, it hurts. Action. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Something that was such a positive experience and something so fun to be a part of, to see it actually come to fruition, you know, it's, without sounding wanky, it's what dreams are made of.